What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report to our special series of WTF this week. This is the WTF week. Brian. You said it, not me. Regarding perhaps the reason for Henry Cavill's appearance in Black Rock. What are you talking about, man? You said, based on, listen, based on the news that that's come out recently about Henry Cavill's uh, um, um, pursuit of the Superman role and what we thought Brian was already set in stone for the next five years or more, I don't know, is not truly set in stone. Brian, what is the holdup then if this is not the case? My this is me thinking, Brian. WB is assessing their future with DC. They're really trying to go forward with the DC universe and stuff, right? I don't think it involves Henry Cavill, right? They're reconsidering, I think, Brian. How much money do we want to put into this? We have no story. Henry Cavill perhaps wants a lot more say. What are the pros? Certainly he has his fans. We saw the reaction in the theaters. The only reaction in the theaters. There's possibility there. But how much? We trying to get to a billion, yo. We're trying to build something here. Is this 40-year-old man? And I'm sorry to say, I'm sure that's what they're asking. Can he be the Superman for what we're trying to do? Or is this just some else world, which we have done or, and are doing with Batman, the Joker? Well, do we add Henry Cavill to the list? Brian, what's going on? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> so what do they say is going on versus what do we really think is going on? Okay, so the company line, James Gunn, Peter Saffron, the new co-heads of DC are working on their quote-unquote DC Bible. And they are supposedly pretty close to having this roadmap done. And as a result, they're kind of hitting pause on lots of things, including Henry Cavill's previously announced return as Superman. So that's the official story. That's not what I see, Pablo. I see a concerted effort by a certain individual not named Henry Cavill who is trying to use the court of public opinion to pressure the studio into the outcome that serves him the best. Care to guess who I'm referring to? BlackRock. We go back to Comic-Con. We heard all these rumors. Henry Cavill's going to be there. Henry Cavill's going to be there. He wasn't there. The Rock booed on stage. But you know what? I look back on that. I think The Rock wanted that. Let me make the case. And we know that at the time of Comic-Con, Henry Cavill's return was not approved by then DC head Walter Hamada. We know that. That's fact. Okay. Is it so far-fetched that Dwayne Johnson would plant a rumor that Henry Cavill would be at the event knowing he would not because obviously his ex-wife is Henry Cavill's agent to then go on stage without Henry Cavill knowing he was going to get asked a question about it and say, well, it depends on who's playing <laughs> Superman. 
So when the negative fallout came, he could then go to Michael DeLuca and say, look, look at what the people want. They want Henry Cavill. They demand Henry Cavill. Give me Henry Cavill in my movie and all your problems will be solved. So Michael DeLuca says, great. They give him Henry Cavill. Cameo happens, right? They don't make any effort to hide the cameo. They let that thing leak on YouTube and play to whoever wanted to see it. We ever seen that before with a cutscene? So that that has a reaction. It doesn't really have that much of a box office reaction, but it has a social media reaction. Sure. So rumors start flying. And then we get the man himself announcing his return as Superman. But the studio never validates. Is it so far-fetched to think that The Rock told Henry Cavill with his massive social media following, if you go public with this on the heels of your appearance in my movie, the groundswell of support will be so big the studio has no choice but to say yes. Small problem, Black Adam didn't do well enough. If that movie, I'm telling you, if that movie today is tracking 700 million, 750, I think Henry Cavill is something. I think because Black Adam didn't really land, it is south of 400 million bucks right now. It is not going to get to 500 million. It is going to lose money. I'm telling you, people, we are starting <laughs> to see the articles. We are starting to see. Oh the yeah, of course. Saying that this was a failure. <laughs> And Nerd now Report. we hear, now we hear <laughs> the studio saying, Lee Corso style, not so fast, my friend. Yeah, they'd be dumb not to rethink this. Yeah. The numbers don't say, the box office doesn't say that they have no other choice. So I think this is a rock PR campaign on the one side and a studio in disarray trying to figure out a roadmap with a couple of guys who just got in the seat on the other side. That's what I said. Brian, if I'm Henry Cavill, am I upset at The Rock for putting me in a position to lose? Because Brian, the movie was whack. Fine, if you liked it, again, hooray for you if you liked it. But the numbers show that people, only the rock fans went to see this movie, man. And only people like myself who love the genre went to go see this movie. And for the fans, they loved it. For the for the rock fans, they loved it. For us, we saw what it was. And for other people who are not interested in the genre, you think they're gonna come to see, out to see this? Look, I mean, the numbers say fewer people went to see this than went to see Rampage. That's wow. the numbers. San Andreas, Rampage, those movies made more global box than this movie's making so far. And so that's even his fan base, crazy. Crazy. It's absurd. <laughs> it's absurd. The Rock as a superhero with a Superman cameo can't outdo a hundred foot ape and a crocodile? I'm telling you. Brian, speaking of The Rock, I'm looking at his uh, IMDb here. Let me list some of the names here. And these are all like future projects. <laughs> okay. And 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 there are gonna be a couple of them in here that I think there's a chance, Brian. If he pulls it off, it can make or break his career. Hmm. Let's start off. Smashing machine. I don't know what the hell that is. Like you said, you think when I say Brian, nobody laughs because it's probably they don't get it. But when I say, when I list the, the names of uh, his movies like Rampage, Skyscraper, um, uh, well, San Andreas, and then I say Truck Driver. He hasn't made a movie named Truck Driver, but he can easily make a movie called Truck Driver. Because we have a movie called Smashing Machine here. Next, Alpha Squad 7. Don't know what that is all about. I don't know. 
ball and chain. Sounds like some sort of marriage situation. Doc Savage, Brian. That, well, that's been percolating for decades. Here's another one that he's been working on studiously, Brian. Well, Arnold was supposed to be Doc Savage 30 years ago. The original this... incarnation was Arnold Schwarzenegger as Doc Savage. So these are one of the names, Brian, that you have to sort of pay attention to because it can either work. And if it doesn't work, Brian, that can really put a damper. But there's another one out there that he's doing that I think can either hit or miss. If it hits, it can be huge for him. If it doesn't, it's a huge blow for him. So John Henry and the Statesman don't know what that is. That's in a pitch stage. Uh, Jungle Cruise 2 announced San Andreas 2 treatment. Oh, I mean, sorry. I don't think we need to say more about that, but that's the um, rock in a nutshell right there. The King, um, he's producing that. Some of them he's producing and some of them he's acting. And I, if you want me, I'll say which one he's just... Uh, uh, I'm pretty sure he's in San Andreas too. It just says executive producer and Raymond Gaines. Then there's another one called The King. Um, he's a producer on that. Um, there's an untitled Dwayne Johnson action comedy is in treatment stage. San Andreas is in treatment stage. He has an untitled Larry Hiblum project is in script stage. Untitled Red Notice sequel pre-production. There's two and of the those. Two of those, Red Notice 2 and 3, going to be shot together. That's the rumor. Okay. And then he has this movie that's filming currently, Red One. I think that's with Chris Evans. Yeah. Let me just read you the tagline for that. I was pulling that up because I knew that was coming. Mm -hmm. The film is a, quote, globe-trotting four-quadrant action comedy imagining a whole new universe to explore within the holiday genre. I mean, right. Amazon's Amazon's the one putting it out. It sounds like more of the same. Here's the other one, Martin. Here is the one that if he can't make this, this is the one that if he doesn't perform, Brian, it's over. Big Trouble in Little China. Oh, yeah. The a remake of the classic. Yep. He has to out. He has to be better than Kurt Russell. Okay, Brian, that's a classic. That's a high bar. Brian, you, I say what I say all the time. I don't like Goofy. Big Trouble Little China is one of the goofiest movies out there. Yeah, true. And it's one of the best joints out there too, <laughs> for its for its genre. Brian, I love Big Big Trouble Little China. We just have to wait and see. But Brian, would you, if you were Henry Cowell, would you be upset? I'd be nervous because I'm no longer part of The Witcher for which might be. I know, right? Created, he gave that up. Reasons financial. Who knows? I mean, that's official. That's done. You can't go back. Liam Hemsworth has your has your costume and has your sword. You're not getting that back. Yeah. So you're all in on superman and it's, it was so funny to me because it was like david zasloff had lunch with steven spielberg and i was like come on like <laughs> like we really gonna do this like we yeah, really yeah, gonna yeah. steven spielberg is gonna direct a henry a man of steel 2 in his <laughs> in his twilight i listen i, I love it super, that would be an amazing superman movie but like it, he's not doing that he's not yeah. doing that. maybe maybe you know I, I, then they were like, "Oh, Chris Nolan came over." It's like he's not going back to that well. We already he produced Man of Steel. Like he already was. He had his hand in that. He's not doing yeah, this. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, I mean, what do you think of my theory? Like that to me? Oh, do you think that's too far fetched? The idea that this is a rock engineered PR campaign on Cavill's behalf versus absolutely not. It doesn't sound far fetched at all, Brian. And it doesn't rule out that Cavill could get, eventually get signed. I mean, I just think. If you're gone, again, we talked about, go back to our thing when Gunn and Saffron got hired. We talked about this. Who's calling the shots? 
They have the title. They have the mission. But yeah. are they really calling the shots? Because if they are, you know that whatever roadmap they're going to lay out for David Zasloff is going to have Superman in the 1-1-A position with Batman. That's yeah. going to happen. But if they are forced to absorb either the Rock Henry Cavill Black Adam version of Superman or the J.J. Abrams Ta-Nehisi Coates version of Superman, then I will tell you that they don't have a lot of authority. Because mm -hmm. I have a feeling that neither of those is really the path that those guys want to go. And James Gunn in particular, who's the creative force behind this, he no doubt has his own ideas about what Superman should be. And that doesn't mean Henry Cavill can't be that Superman, yeah. but it means he might have to play ball. And I don't, I think he's a Superman. And, and I think he's tired of it. I think he's tired of playing ball. He's been a professional. He's been a professional. And is he gonna, is he gonna be, is he gonna, I mean, he's, yo, he's hanging around with The Rock. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just She's saying, you look at the Witcher situation, like we've seen a few of these situations, like Henry Cavill, not the easiest guy to work with, it doesn't look like. Yeah. Like, it kind of looks like he, he likes to definitely have a take a strong view of the project that he's in and the character that he's playing. And I don't blame him in the case of Superman. Mm-hmm. But I'm not convinced the studio is willing to give him the keys because he's not been as bankable a movie star as it would require to have that kind of control. Fatigue. You want to know what creates fatigue? Stuff like this creates fatigue. Like, And that is a good, because we're going to get into that in our next show. Oh my God, yes. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of... Uh, the Superman situation, it ain't looking too good. And if it does, Brian, all the stuff that we're talking about with The Rock is gonna come out. If, if Henry Cavill is not Superman, if they don't move forward, Brian, the stuff that we're talking about right now is gonna be talked about. Well, you'll really know if Henry Cavill changes agents. We'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report.